Manley. Mark Manley. Hi, guys. So uh, I work at Medallia as a front-end engineer. Uh, we do customer experience management. Um, really great place uh, you guys to check out. So um, my talk is functional programming in 30 minutes. So that's not actually <laughs> to teach all of functional programming, obviously. But so I, I would actually, I, I'd consider myself a beginner. Um, so I put a lot of effort into trying to learn functional programming, and I didn't have a CS degree. So um, I wanted to try and uh, take things that I've learned and put them out there. Maybe they'll help other people. Um, so most resources that I've seen focus on uh, theory and trying to demystify things like monoids, monads, applicatives, you, you know, like, and then, but, but if you don't have the, the background, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult, but, I, but why is that? I think it's because we don't have examples to, uh, to compare them to. So we're, we're, we're thinking about these, these general things, and normally when we were thinking about general things, we're going from the particular to the general. We're, you know, uh, we're learning by induction. We, we learn with patterns, um, generally. So if we don't have anything to kind of work off of, then it becomes difficult. So I wanted this talk to be, uh, to just kind of show patterns. Uh, you know, like not explain any laws or anything like that. But, uh, but more so to just kind of, um, you know, uh, show how you can use it. And then, you know, the more comfortable we can feel using it or reading it, then the more likely we are to be able to go and learn theory and say, oh, that makes sense. I, I remember, you know, using this or that, and then it applies, you know, however it applies. So, um, so let's start off. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm going to be using Sanctuary JS. Um, sure, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. This is. Uh, okay. So. Um, so I want to uh, talk about. Um, so first of all. What is functional programming? You know, that I think there's a lot of um, kind of partial definitions like floating around out there, and um, it's kind of difficult to pin down what it is. Um, so, for the purposes of this talk, I'm just going to uh, give you an operational definition. We're just going to run with it. Um, I, so, functional programming is extreme early binding for the purposes of taking advantage of insights of mathematics. So why didn't I talk about referential transparency or first class functions? Um, well, you know, you can actually write a functional language with small talk or assembly. You know, you can have first class functions without ever having first class functions. You can kind of build things up. That's not really, those are means. It's, it's nice to have. It's great to have pattern matching, but that's not really the motivation, I think, behind functional programming. So really, there's, there's all this, this power in mathematics out there waiting to be used. And how do we use it? We have to know things. So if we don't know something yet, we can't apply any sort of abstract knowledge to it. You know, uh, We can't reason about that. But, but if we know something and we codify it, then we can actually say, I, can, I know this much about it. And I can apply this much. So, so that's kind of one of the, the, the core intuitions that I think about functional programming when I'm, when I'm learning. We want to try and get knowledge in the code as soon as possible. You know something, codify it. it you know, it's, uh, you're slowly having a conversation with a compiler. And, and over time, that evolves into something that hopefully is correct. <laughs> so um, a very foundational thing is partial application. Uh, so some languages offer currying by default. Uh, in JavaScript, we have to use language or libraries. 
Uh, but this is, it's, it's really handy. So this is, you know, an example of, um, here is, uh, so Sanctuary has an add function, and we're adding one. What are we adding one to? I don't know yet, you know? But, uh, so we can take that, uh, go down here in the REPL. So what is that? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a function. So we can actually take that, we can add 42 and we get 43. You know, uh, so it's, it's really handy. But see, I'm not just kind of using it in line. It's, it's nice to actually take what we know and, and store it. And then progressively, we, we kind of stepwise increase what we know. Whether it's through partial application like this, we have increment and decrement, or composition. And see, so this one right here, what do you think it does? So, got that, put in 42. Oh, wait, <laughs> I have to actually, um, get both of these. Um, okay, so then now, 42, because it adds one, decrements one, so co compose, kind of, it takes that 42 and it feeds it in from right to left. So, but it's, it, again, if we're doing small compositions, it's easier. So the way we get to small compositions is using lots of compositions, doing it quickly. You know something can be composed and you're gonna use it, compose it, and then store it in a variable. Um, so, uh, and then, you know, here's just the, of course, we have map. I mean, everyone's gonna be familiar with that one probably, but, um, so, what does this really buy us if, you know, if we're trying to kind of uh, define things earlier and earlier, um, as soon as we know them? Um, well, let me go over uh, here, code sandbox. Um, so I have uh, so two React components right here. Um, right now, they're, they're the same. They're just named different. Uh, but you can, you can see that we're using React state. Um, and we, we bind uh, the, the um, member function to, uh, to the, um, in, the, in the constructor because, uh, you know, that's just kind of how we have to do it. Uh, so, I mean, this, this is not hard to read. This is not really hard to reason about. Uh, but we can actually gain some power out of, you know, trying to, to refactor it a little bit. So, so instead of, of just doing it in here, we're going to bring in some stuff, this, this time from Ramda. And, um, Are you able to make that one a little bit bigger? Uh, Thank you. That good? Yeah. Larger? Maybe a little bigger. Can I hide that? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're, uh, we're using uh, a lens, is a, it's a functional way of, think of like lodash.get, if you're familiar with that. You can go like deep into a structure, but lens is actually composed together, like functions, you know? And so you can actually make your deep accesses modular and kind of build it up as you go. But um, I mean, right here, it's, it's not that big of a win because it's, you know, it's, we're just dealing with one level deep and it's, it's a primitive. But uh, so we set up the lens and then we can run a function um, over that lens. But what is that function? Well, uh, we don't know yet. We go down a line and here we actually put in a function, that increment function. And um, so uh, instead of going in right here with, with state, we can actually um, uh, we say uh, set state. Uh, let's 
see. Ink count lens. And we could say here, uh, deck count lens. But then we could actually, um, we could actually probably go further and uh, take, take ink out lens and, uh, and uh, bind it in here. But so the the but instead of um, I guess this is this is a it's it's harder to see like the, the larger what this how this affects large you know systems because uh, this is such a small example but you know we by taking the implementations and we took them outside of the class now that will happen again and again in a large system the the, the more complicated and and just you know. Uh, unruly your system is, the more these functions will start to piece by piece go up and up and up until, you know, and then that promotes reuse because, so you have, you know, this function uh, and that function, you compose them together down here, you compose these two over here, it, you know, you, you kind of get like this, this tree of functions and, um, and which, not only do you get reuse uh, as a as a you know uh, matter of code maintainability, but it's also nice for performance because when you reuse things, the jet can can recognize it's hot. Um, so okay, uh, like here um, again, we're we're looking at it with uh, partial applications. So uh, we, we we could say. Um, uh, right here, uh, maybe 42. Um, but I, I just wanted to drive home that uh, we, might, we may not know what 42 is at this point, but, but we know that we don't want to deal with nulls. That's what maybe is about, you know, like we want to do stuff and it just work. And uh, if it doesn't, we're willing to let it drop to the floor. So uh, right here, if we do that, we see... Um, it's, it's ready to take something and wrap it and then say it exists or not. Instead of having to, you know, check for null or undefined or null and undefined, you know. Uh, and, and then there's all these, you know, these different ways that, that every team approaches it. But this way, we don't have to, like, think about it too much. It's just, you know, there's a maybe. Uh, and we protect our, our, uh, our execution pass with that. So uh, we see... Um, right here, we put 42 in, we get just 42. We put in null, oh, actually, uh, I used that one wrong. Okay, um, so, um, right here, if we get, uh, we, we can map over, uh, maybe, um, so this one, we're taking a function, and uh, it should apply uh, it to the inside of um, the thing, and it does. So uh, that's because uh, these things know, kind of know how to uh, work together. There are well-defined interfaces, and you know, like of course, there are laws that that kind of discipline these, but it's, um, it's essentially, uh, we get this inheritance tree that is really well-defined and it's, it's made sure that there are no conflicts. So instead of worrying about inheritance, um, because you know, we're having to do it uh, as fallible human beings, uh, these these are already you know like the, they are deconflicted, and that's that's really nice. Um, so you know there's uh, this one is more of a sanctuary specific function, um, but so so here if if we take the head of an empty array, uh, you know does it throw an error? Does it give null? Uh, but here we can we can do this. Uh, and 
it just uh, it doesn't include the ones that would throw an error or um, give us a null. So then you know we we take the head of the one two three and the head of the four five six, and um, you know this this allows us to again uh, uh, you know, like stop littering our code bases with a bunch of if checks you know for for null because make your if statements mean something you know when you use it like don't make it garbage don't like you know it it could mean this could mean that and you know when you use it 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 should mean something and and this is a way of of empowering us to to do that so um, Similarly, uh, so there's either. Maybe is if it fails, it just you drop it on the floor. We, you know, oh, oh well, we don't want it to blow up. Either is we actually want to know what happened, uh, or maybe we want to handle it even. But uh, so for that, um, so here's a way to to kind of construct an either. Um, there are multiple ways. Um, Sweetie. So right is right, and left is not right. I mean, that's kind of like the general, um, uh, you know, way to remember it. Um, so okay, we can we can map a function over it, and again, you see, like I'm again, I'm partially applying just to kind of you know hit home. Like we, you know, you don't have to know everything up front. You know, if if you all you know is you're going to map square root over some uh, collection, that's fine, you know, just, um, so here, you know, if, if the thing is left, uh, the, the actual, um, the computation won't occur. Uh, it, it'll just kind of sh short circuit. And uh, this is um, kind of, uh, there's this idea of, of railway oriented programming where you have like this this track that the, the train is going along and that's the happy path, you know, everything's going fine. And there's a parallel path and that's the one that, you know, like you're, you're you know, like you're a bad train, you know, like you, it's not, not, not the track you want to be on. But at any point with, with an either, you, you know, you're going along the execution and if you hit a left, then you go on to the bad path, but nothing blows up, and you can then catch it and see, you know, like what point did you go on to the bad path, and then handle it appropriately. Um, so uh, here is, uh, you know, there there are lots of ways of combining these things. Um, so here's here's an example. If we have um, a right and a left, uh, we want to put them together. What's going to happen? Well, the, the left part's going to get ignored. And, um, and, and you're going to get left with the right. And so, um, which is a little bit different from when you're running um, computations on it. So like, here, let's look at this one either. So, now we're we're gonna we have a left function and a right function. So if the data is left, the left function will be applied. If it's a right, the right function. So we have this. Well, let me actually. This is what it looks like. I just want to. So you know, it's it's partially applied. Um, and then you know, like we're in our in our program where we have hit the point where. Um, the the left comes in, it, you know. Something said I, we can't divide by zero. The two upper got applied to it. I mean, that's you know, like that's just a, a silly example for this. But you know, it, it could be some sort of uh, uh, trigger to a like uh, an I/O. It, it could log something. You could you could handle it uh, if, appropriately if it's you know the. A, a certain kind of error. Um, and then here we see that same function with a value that comes in that's, it's all right. And then it's just 42. Turn that number to a string. So um, that, and that's cool. It, you know, it kind of gives us uh, a, a way of, 
of, of structuring our, our programs, like the execution declaratively, we're, we're creating sort of these, these nodes that the, the you know, the, our, our program, you know, is traveling around on. Um, so here, what I did was, um, uh, so I'm actually uh, storing this one. Um, again, I want to kind of reinforce, you know, it's, it's it's really helpful to to think of it in terms of uh, you know getting you know get, getting it into the code whatever whatever you know at the time it, so by map um, is very similar to what we just saw with the left function the right function by map has a left and a right and so we can we can take that and uh, it'll it'll behave uh, really similarly I you know, I have to. Make sure it's defined. So we have a left case, we have a right case. You know, uh, so that, uh, that that's a way of, of helping us get control and predictability over our programs um, without as much clutter. Um, and again, there's lots of ways to do things, but uh, but I, I want to try and give uh, uh, like an easy kind of um, a, a way, you know, that that we can just like we can start off somewhere, and and then uh, there's a lot to learn, you know. Uh, so here's an example of lifting. So we take this is um, this is a a, a function. You know, like just a function right here, but we have a context. This is you know a maybe context that we're we're dealing with. Uh, so we want to add those functions if they exist, but if they're null, then we don't want to, you know, do that. So that, that's that's what lift does. So there's lift two, lift three. This this one we're gonna have we're gonna expect two arguments. So we do this in here. We get just eight. Um, so let, let's say we, we did this, uh, and we got s dot nothing, nothing. So we you know it. it, it you can hit um, those paths in your code that uh, would normally uh, cause a whole lot of, of problems. You have to make sure that your all your checks are very particular to the case involved. But this is general. This is general handling of nulls, and and that is is really cool. Uh, so there's also apply. Um, this is uh, for applicatives. So this is uh, this is kind of similar, but like here we saw s dot add. That's that's a normal function. Here we're actually going to have a function inside of a context. So this is a maybe context. So we want to apply uh, the square root. To just four, um, and what's going to happen? We're going to get just two. So if it's a, a left, if the function is a left, you know, uh, no such function. And so now, here, right here, the value is going to be a left. But but then this gives us the ability, like, what actually went wrong? You know, was it was it the function? Was it the value? And this way, we can actually start to get a, a handle on uh, where things went wrong. We can better prepare ourselves to handle these these issues as they come up. Um, so those are all the examples I have uh, prepared. Um, so, uh, any any questions? <clears throat> Sanctuary. Sanctuary. So, you, so it, it, it's an offshoot of Ramda. Okay. And you have no variables, or the variables are immutable? Uh, um, do you, what do you mean? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, so in the functional language, the very, you should have either no variables, or the variables are invariable. Yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely you want to favor immutability. Um, so strictly speaking, it should just be immutable, right? If you were going to do a function. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and of course, you know, we have to deal with like the real world and um, uh, legacy code base, what you know, existing code and and, and all that, and this transition. But uh, but it's definitely easy to reason about things immutably. What's the use case for using Sanctuary or this style of functional checking? Okay, um, well, so as, as opposed to um, what uh, al alternative? Yes. Okay, uh, so there's a you know different different ways of doing things. Let's say uh, Lodash. Um, so normal Lodash, the order of the arguments is is different. So instead of function first, it's data collection first, um, and that makes it harder to curry. Uh, so you know we saw like let me go up to the to the top right here. You know s.add1, we didn't need to know the next argument. We, you know, this is a silly example, of, of course. I mean, you know, it, maybe you would use that, but, um, but it allows us to step-by-step step say, I, I know this one thing. Let me define it clearly. I can test it clearly. Um, I can, if, if it's typed, you're using TypeScript perhaps, I can actually reason about the types. So a, a big problem that can happen is you have large compositions, you know, like with, with eight functions. And you, you can see this a lot with something uh, like high order components. Um, you know, like that can actually be painful. But, but if your compositions are small and frequent, you know, when you know something, you compose it. Then it's a lot, at, at that point, it's simple to reason about because you're not interleaving all these things. You're just there's two things composed, you know? Uh, so that this, this style actually, that it promotes that. Whereas a Lodash style uh, promotes constantly assigning to variables line by line and thinking in terms of, of lines and which leads to larger functions as opposed to reuse. So because we can say this function is, is a partial, you know, like it's not a partial function, it's um, uh, a partially applied function, you know, we can complete it later in all sorts of different ways that will be useful at that point. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely promoting us to, to reuse things. But uh, if, you, if you need to have the entire function laid out every time you use it, then, um, you know, uh, how, how are you going to reuse it as easily? Um, like, reuse becomes use of the function, and uh, you don't get further uh, reuse. Uh, did I make that? Uh, is, is there a way I could make, it, <laughs> make that less unclear? Yeah, uh, so um, you, you can definitely do that, um, but there is, a, there are, are, are um, it becomes harder to achieve the things like with, with uh, the, the context I was talking about, the, the maybes and the eithers, or there's more, there's state, there's reader, there's, you know, all sorts of things that you can take advantage of, and you can take those, those ES6 uh, arrow functions and, and feed them in there, uh, but, you know, if, if all you're using is, is just simple functions, then um, you've only gone so high on the abstraction level, and you'll have to still use the constructs in the language, like the, you know, like if, else, check for nulls, you know, uh, frequently. And um, I, I, I think part of it uh, is, you know, in why I wanted to, to try and, and go for more um, pattern-based experiential uh, talk is because uh, I wanted people to feel 
more comfortable trying it themselves. When you actually start using it, then you see things that are difficult to convey. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of uh, just automatic cleaning up that happens uh, the, when you start using uh, these abstractions that, um, you know, I don't know, trust me. <laughs> if you're right, you can write functional programming in pure JavaScript, but you'd have to rely on your own discipline that you didn't hmm. violate rules about not creating side effects and things like that. And I, I'm not familiar with the library, but I assume that it basically, you know, protects you from doing the things that are not that are non-functional, if you will. Yeah, or or at least makes it easier to not do them. Um, you know, I think that is, uh, it's, it's very, very helpful when we're programming in JavaScript. Um, you know, uh, I, I love JavaScript, but, uh, uh, you know, there are, um, it, it requires discipline. And, you know, uh, like we need to uh, be on our best behavior. Uh, yeah. Um, probably because I can't see the concept of the library, but... Those two lines for the ink and the dig. Oh. How does that not? How is that not executing that method? Like, why doesn't it just call the add? Why is it? Why does that become a functional pointer? Uh, so it's it's something along the lines of this. Uh, you know, let's say um, const add equals. Um, uh, let's just say x, uh, and then uh, we say y. Uh, and then x plus y, something. So you know, we, we, we supply the first argument in, and and it uh, kind of it captures it uh, within a closure, and then it doesn't execute the fun. It just returns that function. So now um, there is this new function that knows about one. And but it doesn't know about y yet. Y is um, not bound. So then, once that happens, then you can finally get to x plus y. Okay. And, and so this is this is generally the pattern that you'd see occurring. Um, you can do it with with error functions. Could you repeat the definition of functional programming? Okay, so um, uh, I, I said extreme early binding uh, for the purpose of taking advantage of insights of mathematics. And um, so uh, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with um, Alan Kay, uh, but he, so he's, uh, you know, the, kind of like the lead uh, behind small talk. Um, and he talked about, uh, you know, what, what object-oriented programming really is, and he stressed uh, extreme late binding. Um, you know, and said that uh, you know, as, as opposed to like the, the kind of like you know what we think of now as object-oriented programming, Java, C plus uh, plus, they were really motivated by psychology and learning theory. Um, uh, people like uh, Piaget and even Montessori, you know, like that, and so they were. We're thinking, you know, knowledge is experiential. We we don't really know what the thing is. That's why we're calling it an object until we've experienced enough to know, you know. And so you have this kind of process of of kind of getting closer and closer to what the thing is. Um, but it, you know, fun, it, it, whenever you're deferring something till later, you're also kind of, by definition, unless you're taking your entire program and making it a lookup table at the end or a lookup table at the beginning. You know, like you're going to have uh, deferring and uh, doing something sooner. So, um, so you know, with, with functional programming, the, the focus for, for the user, I think, is on, on, you know, like the user wants to, to actually know things and put and codify that sooner. And what ends up happening is the language constructs that you see in functional programming tend to support the opposite. So you see lazy evaluation or weak head normal form, like in Haskell. Or um, 
so you see, you know, monads are a way of, of, of retaining state to be used later. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lazy process. Um, whereas um, you, if you looked at, uh, you know, object-oriented programming uh, over, over years, then uh, you, like, it starts to accumulate more and more static stuff. And, uh, it, you know, uh, it did, small tuck didn't have e even classes at first, you know, but then they added it. And, and so, you know, like the, whatever um, the, the motivation uh, for like, you know, when you want to bind things as a, as a programmer, it seems like the, the language naturally wants to offer you constructs that kind of support that because there needs to be a balance, you know? But, um, you yeah, know, so that's what I was thinking. Cool, I mean, you mentioned, I, I connected yeah. that definition to what you wanted to say about yeah. you know when you know something to codify it that, yeah, that, yeah. Right. yeah thank you Thanks. okay I guess that's all yeah Thanks. Yeah. I guess selecting between two functions of the left and right would you recommend I guess using this type of programming when you have more than just two functions to choose from yeah, that one I would say is probably more of uh, an advanced feature, like a, a obscure, not not as common. Uh, to, but, to yeah, um, but you might find uh, a reason to do it. I think that, uh, um, you know, like a, again, you wanted to try and go step by step, tiny steps, and if at some point you you feel like the function should be first or you know, that context of a maybe should be first, then, you know, you go for that. Um, so if, if you think that the function should go first, but you don't know what the function is, uh, you have to go look it up, but it may not be there. That's when I would, I would think, you know, you, you uh, apply an either to it. Uh, so. Execute or not execute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Execute or bail with information, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.